Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, we are going to explore McDonald's Event Driven Architecture, which is nothing but an unified platform which enables the real-time event driven use cases for McDonald's. Okay. So this particular architecture, I just went through from a medium blog post. That blog URL, I'll be sharing in the description box or in the comment section. You can go through that and explore in detail. Here I am explaining the central idea of that architecture, how the data is flowing via that data pipeline in real time. Okay. So at McDonald's, this particular architecture is used starting from mobile order progress tracking to sending marketing communication to customers and many other transactional and analytical use cases. So without any further delay, let us directly dive into the architecture and its different components. So first of all, Obviously, there can be lot of external events. Maybe for example, some customer is giving some order or maybe some payment is done or whatever XYZ external events are there. Those events are coming in the McDonald's system via AWS API Gateway. Okay. So here I can write Amazon API Gateway. Obviously, they are doing some authentication and authorization, maybe using AWS Cognito or IAM role based authentication or API key based authentication, etc. Now, external events via Amazon API Gateway are reaching out to the producer. And this producer you can consider as SDK, which is responsible for publishing the messages in our Kafka cluster. Okay. Not only external events, but obviously there can be some internal or private events also. Like maybe for example, sending some marketing communication or maybe sending some particular offers to specific segment of customers that personalized communication from internal system they are getting. And those internal or private events also reaching to producer SDK. So that producer SDK can publish those messages or events to Kafka cluster. Okay. So this is basically our data source from where events are coming. Now what the producer will do? The producer will publish those messages to a Kafka topic. So let's consider this as primary topic. And this particular Kafka is basically managed streaming for Apache Kafka McDonald is using. That means basically MSK Kafka cluster within that the primary topic is sitting where the producer using SDK their favorite language that can be Java, Python or something using that they are publishing the messages in this Kafka topic. Okay. Now obviously whatever events are coming from external source or internal source if without doing a schema validation if they are publishing in Kafka cluster then there is a huge possibility that the downstream job might fail due to schema mismatch or some other issues. So obviously here also the schema registry is there. Okay. So what producer does before publishing the messages in the primary topic, it validated against the schema registry. So here validate I can write. So how to validate the message schema using schema registry on this I have discussed several topics in many videos. The video links I will be sharing in the description box or in the comment section you can go through that. Okay. Now once the messages are validated that means if the schema is compatible then only the producer publish those messages in Kafka topic. But suppose this schema is not matched as per expectation, then what it does? The producer basically publishes those messages in the same MSK cluster. There is a separate topic which is acting like DLQ, that is dead letter Q or dead letter topic. And that topic is sitting in same MSK cluster where our primary topic is sitting. In that particular DLQ topic, the producer is publishing those messages if the messages are not following the proper schema or maybe if some error occurs which is retriable. That is if retried again to publish the messages in primary topic, it will be resolving the earlier issue. If those kind of retriable error occurs or if schema is not compatible, then in that case, the messages are getting published in DLQ. I hope up to this it is pretty much clear, right? Now there can be some possibilities when due to some reason the MSK cluster is not available or not reachable. So if the MSK cluster is not available then not only primary topic will not be accessible but the DLQ or DLT that is dead letter topic also will not be accessible because this particular DLQ also sitting in same MSK cluster right. So what in that case we might face as the Kafka cluster itself is not reachable so we might face some data loss. So to avoid that if the MSK clusters are not reachable, what the producer SDK will do? It will publish or write those events in DynamoDB. Okay. 
so here i can write msk not reachable okay in that case this particular path will be followed and this is basically acting like a standby event source why it is event source i will come to that but why it is standby i hope it is clear because once the producer is not able to reach to msk cluster due to cluster unavailability or not reachability for some reason then it will write to dynamodb so obviously it is a standby storage so the significance of the word standby is clear to you why it is event source i will come to that so here the schema registry is helping in filtering out those messages which are not following the proper expected schema right so here this schema registry is helping in data governance for mcdonald right so i can write here data governance or we can say data integrity is achieved using this schema registry this is very vital part in any organization and basically this schema registry also i covered using blue schema registry there are some other schema registry also available some companies use confluent schema registry hosting that in amazon elastic container registry or some sort of that kind of services but that is just a separate place where this schema registry is hosted ultimately the concept is same whether you are using blue schema registry or schema registry hosted in ecs or even brief schema registry etc etc right so this helps in data governance and data integrity and it makes sure no messages are getting published to kafka cluster which are not following this schema if the messages are not following the proper schema as expected the messages goes to dlq right now what happens to these messages which reach to dlq let us try to understand those okay so as per the mcdonald architecture they are having one admin utility here which read the messages from dlq and then they detect whether the error for which the message it was not able to publish in primary topic that error is retrieval error or non retrieval error so that means if retried again the error will be resolved is there any possibility such available or there is no such possibility available upon retry also for sure the message published will fail so that it detects in this layer okay so if the error is retrieval what it does it basically send these messages in aws lambda okay and what the aws lambda does the aws lambda try to publish those messages in this primary topic so this particular path is only followed once the retrieval error so i can write yes so if the error can be resolved upon retry then it trigger lambda from lambda it goes to primary topic msk right how to publish messages in msk cluster from aws lambda that also i discussed in my previous video you can check that and in dynamodb also there can be some messages stored for example if the msk is not reachable then the producer has to publish the messages in dynamodb right so what this particular lambda does this lambda goes to dynamodb and read all the messages due to temporary msk unreachability which messages the producer was not able to publish that time the lambda will consume all those messages from dynamodb and then it will try to publish in the msk primary topic okay so in this case i hope you can easily understand that those messages which are stored in dynamodb those are also acting like a source of events or source of messages for our kafka cluster that's why this dynamodb is called as standby event source event source why because lambda is reading those messages or events which earlier failed to publish now it is trying to publish so dynamodb is acting like a message or event source that's why event source term is coming and standby why because the messages come to dynamodb only if the msk cluster is not reachable so that's why the name is standby event source now suppose in dlq there are some messages stored which are non retrieval message that is if you retry then also there is a possibility that the message will again encounter some failure or error when trying to publish in the kafka cluster okay so that time what it does that time this particular path is followed that is retrieval error no and here the mcdonald is having dedicated engineer team who basically try to rectify those issues and then publish in msk cluster so i can write rectify okay so here what it does from dlq the messages the admin utility consume if they are retrieval error via lambda it send so here i can write retry okay and if they are non retrieval error then dedicated engineering team rectify those issues and publish them in msk cluster okay right and obviously in right hand side we are having our consumer 
which consume the messages and while consuming the messages again it validate against the expected schema and if the schema is compatible then only the consumer consume and process it for further business requirements okay right so this is basically overall mcdonald's unified platform for real time event processing so in this particular architecture we can easily see many things we already explored in depth in our channel that is basically amazon api gateway amazon msk dynamo db lambda and after studying all this when we can see that big big companies are utilizing those services only in their complex engineering problems then actually it feels great right because we can correlate with this architecture because we know all these tech stacks so i hope you understood this this is all for my this video if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you for watching